Welcome to Jay's Analysis. I'm Jay Dyer. Today we're going to break down Bart Box starring Sandra Blindfold, I mean Sandra Bullcock and John Malkovich. This is the story of a wine mom <laughs> who is forced uh, during a demonic apocalypse to float down a river. So it reminded me of Shyamalan's The Happening. Imagine The Happening with demons and blindfolds. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Now, there were some interesting elements to this movie. Everybody's kind of breaking it down, putting out theories. And I think it has a little bit of a, a symbolic depth to it. But really, it's not that difficult to decode. But I thought since everybody's talking about it, I would give my opinion. So I think at the beginning, we see her uh, after the flashback. We see her painting paintings. And the paintings, of course, pre-signify things that are going to come in the future. So she seems to have a kind of prophetic spirit about her. Uh, her artwork is foreshadow foreshadowing what comes in the near future. So they're prophetic. And she sees um, everybody going crazy on TV. And then we see later her, her sister and others actually do see it. Uh, and they lose it, right? They go crazy. And so what we have here is, I think, something that they initially think is biological. The TV newscasters speculate that. Then they say, oh, maybe this is some kind of ELF, a frequency uh, type bio warfare thing. It's something that, that's getting in through our senses. So we, in a, on a symbolic level, what we have is the idea that seeing, and then we later see the crazy cult members who want to force everybody to see the same thing they see. I think this represents uh, foolish, zealous religious people because the people who don't see are specifically not religious. And, and eventually it becomes the, the crazed loons from the mental institute who have seen it and who will go around trying to convert everybody, they're demonic, right? They're, we see that through the guy's sketches that they're sketching basically uh, Cthulhu and Slender Man, more or less. So they're possessed. They're trying to get everybody into their cult. And so if we read it in a kind of weird fedora way, atheistic fedora way, what we see is uh, the, the religious are conceived of as those who think they see but who are essentially demonically possessed, trying to force convert everybody else to religion or theism or what they think is the truth. And the truly enlightened are those who are blindfolded. What does this remind you of? Well, it reminds you of the agnosticism and atheism of many levels of masonry. So that, I think, is the significance of the blindfold. could have reference to Socrates and the idea of... Uh, not knowing, right? The cloud of unknowing, not knowing in order to reach knowledge. Uh, all of those could be being referenced, or it could just have a straight up apocalyptic reference to a version of the end times, right? Some kind of weird Hollywood version of, as the nerdy black uh, fat Urkel guy says, uh, this is about demons. This is about demons showing you your worst nightmare, right? Um, and he lists right? A whole bunch of occult beings that he read about on the internet. <laughs> so another possibility is, is this project's blue beam, right? The idea that the government can utilize a false uh, alien invasion scenario and that this could trigger the world's religions and so forth. Uh, I think that's possible that there is project blue beam. And I think that uh, there might have been some nod to this in the movie, but I think we are supposed to think that it is demonic because, you know, eventually we see whenever the spirits uh, come, we see like, you know, the leaves twirl like like Taz is coming from Looney Tunes or whatever. Um, but we're told that it's the end game. And so I think the, the black guy is right. He is basically presaging and explaining what it is. The, the demons are here. The abyss has been opened. And they're going to either force you to join their cult uh, or you have to, um, to die. 
You have to kill yourself. You have to embrace death. Uh, and he basically, he gives us, in his list, it's, very, it's a very Cosbian. It's a very Cosbian definition. It was sort of like the gobble, zeeble, deeble, dobble. He lists all these. It's a very Cosbian definition of the end of the world. And for whatever reason, we're told birds don't like it. Um, the movie's called Bird Box, right? You know, box has many different <laughs> significations. Uh, and I think that what we're supposed to think is that everybody's trapped inside their houses, inside their boxes, like birds. Everybody's stuck inside like a bird in a bird cage. And uh, beyond that, I couldn't really see any significance to the idea of the birds. Eventually, of course, at the end, spoiler alert, she hears the sounds of the birds and follows them to the blind community, which is essentially the refuge, uh, the, the fount of safety uh, at the end of the film. But we know that it somehow has to do with our field of vision, somehow has to do with being fooled by our senses. And so in a way, uh, if we want to go down the route of Gnosticism, we could see it as a kind of Gnostic sort of Luciferian treatise that that decept that or play, Plato that you know what we see is deceptive. The things that are presented to us are not the real reality, and we have to be sort of removed from that, close our eyes, blindfold ourselves, and have our senses reoriented through hearing the truth, right? And then we can come back and see the world in a new way. So that could be an aspect of it too. Um, there is said, the cult members say that this purity is going to cleanse the world. It's going to get rid of all of the unbelievers. And so again, I think this is kind of an atheistic uh, nod here with the idea that we're going, that, that all religious people immediately go on crusades to kill everybody. When of course, atheists have been the most murderous in history, especially in the 20th century with, tens of millions of dead. And so I think, yes, there is a nod to masonry here. Um, and I was going to try to do a, a John Malkovich interpretation. I was going to try to do my John Malkovich bitch interpretation. Yeah. John Malkovich talks out of his mouth. Did you ever notice he's, he plays this very arrogant character who talks out of the very front of his mouth with a lisp. John Malkovich, did you know Sandra Bullcock? Did you know Sandra Bullcock that I'm John Malkovich? So could it have reference to apocalypticism? Yes. Does it have reference to atheism and agnosticism and Gnostic Luciferianism? Absolutely. That's what the film is about. So I would also like to congratulate Sandra Bullcock on her transition from Sandra Bullcock into late stage Jacko. This is Jay Dyer from Jay's Analysis. You can check out all of my work at jaysanalysis.com and please buy my book, Esoteric Hollywood 1 and 2, signed copies available in my shop. You can also subscribe to the website, push like and all that crap down below. Thank you and have a good day.